गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग एज द टाइम जोन यू आर इन आई वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन दिस आई एम पी स्कूल वेबिनार सीरीज दिस वेबिनार सीरीज हैज बीन स्टार्टेड सिंस जून एंड एवरी मंथ मिनिमम टू वेबिनार्स आर हैपनिंग थैंक्स टू आई एम पी प्रेसिडेंट मदान रेहानी फॉर टेकिंग द इनिशिएटिव एंड स्टार्टिंग these webinars regularly because of the covid pandemic we are not having a in person meeting and therefore education through the new platform that is e education and we'll be learning today more possibilities about this uh, e learning so today's uh, uh, talk is on e learning in medical physics education why how much what when and how much based on 20 years experience the online uh, methods of learning is a best suited for everyone as you know very well and uh, in this uh, more relevant in this covid 19 pandemic this digital revolution has led to remarkable changes in how education contents is assessed consumed discussed and shared e learning is leading any time with the help of electronic media usually through the internet uh it be it online learning platform e books unlike classroom teachings with online learning assess the contents unlimited number of times you can assess useful at the time of revision for an examination in e learning you can attend the lectures whenever you want with this with the ease and the today's speaker is very well known to all of us however i will briefly introduce him professor slavik tabako is very very active in medical physics for last 30 years he is presently the vice president of the iupsm he is immediate past president of the iomp and he has contributed to international development of medical physics for over 30 years both born in bulgaria and graduated from technical university sofia bulgaria and again he trained and specialized in x ray diagnostic radiology physics and engineering in usa france and germany since 1991 almost 30 years he is at kings college hospital and kings college london he is uh, the founding director of msc clinical sciences that is a medical physics msc clinical science clinical engineering msc medical engineering and physics and he is a co director of the ictp programs developed the first e learning in medical physics the first education website the first medical dictionary translated to 31 languages and encyclopedia of Uh, medical physics what is the imitel 2 uh, program founding co editor and uh, editor in chief of iomp journal of medical physics international he had chaired etc iomp i f m b e and iupsm contributed to 15 msc courses starting across the globe he has received various awards to name few king's college london teaching excellent award ev eu award for education contribution leo leonardo da vinci award honorary membership of the mp iomp herald jones medal for the excellence with this brief introduction i would like to hand over the floor to professor slavik tabako before that the recording of this webinar will be done and it will be available on the iomp website within 48 hours during the lecture at the end of the lecture you can put your question into the chat box i will try to collect the most appropriate questions and put to professor slavik tabako to generate more discussions and uh, uh, satisfy your queries and questions i again request to kindly mute Uh, your speakers and also put off your uh, video cameras 
so that the bandwidth is not shared. With this introduction, I hand over the floor to Professor Slavik Tabako. Your floor is yours, Slavik Tabako. I am unsharing, uh, I stop my unshare, uh, the uh, PPT and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Chogure. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. And you can go to PPT. Yeah. Is it now? Can you yeah. see it well? Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much, Professor Chogure. Thank you very much to everyone. It is a pleasure, dear colleagues, to see you around the world. Good morning, hello, good evening, wherever you are. Um, what I should share with you now is uh, the e-learning in medical physics education and specifically why, how, what, when and how much of this we have to uh, include in our education. And this is based on a more than 20 years experience. Uh, Pro Professor Chogli introduced me already, so I'm not going to do that. I just want to say that uh, I dedicated the past 30 years of my professional life to uh, education in medical physics and specifically to e-learning. And uh, I should try now to share this experience with you here. All this experience is, is based on a real, um, real um, projects which we have developed. And here you could see a timeline starting somewhere at the beginning of the 90s and the number of projects we develop with their phases and the number of conferences we organize in the field of medical physics education and e-learning. And this continued further on. And these were receiving a lot of awards. So uh, I think this was appreciated by many people around the world. These are now used in over 80 countries around the world. The first question in front of us when uh, we speak about e-learning is why we should have to introduce e-learning in our profession. The first question which we should have to uh, ask ourselves is, with the e-learning, what we shall achieve? And what is imperative for our profession is e-learning allows many visuals. And these are imperative for our, for our profession, for everything what we do. We are having images, diagrams, uh, uh, and this is very important for for a uh, applied medical physics profession. The next thing which is very important is that it allows easy update. Our profession is dynamic and due to this reason, it is very important to have easy update of our, of our materials, which change almost every other year. Another very important moment is, are we able to develop e-learning? And the IT skills in the specialists in our profession are excellent. Many of our colleagues are very good with software, with hardware, uh, IT hardware, and these are prerequisites for uh, saying that the e-learning is very suitable for medical physics. You could see here on this image on the top, uh, the first project which we developed Emerald with some of the colleagues who took part, and I'm very happy to, uh, to say hello to them because some of them are now uh, at the moment here with us. And we decided that e-learning is very suitable for medical physics. 20 years after that, every single year, every single was, every single one of us is assured that this is a very good decision we took at the moment. And what we did is we started everything with images and preparing image databases. At that time, this was a very rare thing to do in the beginning of the 90s, but the whole image database was actually based on the structure of the knowledge. And this was something what I should underline many times during this presentation, the structure of the knowledge. So we had prepared excellent structure of the knowledge. And from the uh, beginning, we did this CD-ROM, which probably many of you know, uh, the Emerald Training Course in Medical Radiation Physics. And so I think we all are proud that this was not only the first in the profession, this was second in the world e-learning materials with ISBN number as a book. And here you could see the three such CDs which were made in only four months time. Uh, we were the second together with the Springer Fairlock and McGraw-Hill. So when we are preparing this, it was obvious that internet is actually the best medium to transfer this knowledge. So we immediately went into the development of a uh, 
website, which was the first educational website in medical physics. We did it in 1999. And this is the group of colleagues uh, which took part in this other project. And these uh, materials and this website was tested in the ICTP College of Medical Physics in Trieste in 1999, where I'm one of the co-directors of this college. And uh, the materials grew to include over 3,000 images from diagnostic radiology, nuclear medicine, radiotherapy, magnetic resonance, ultrasound, etc. And most importantly, this website, emerald2.eu, which is a free website, works non-stop over 20 years now. And the reason for that is that we uh, coded the whole website. We didn't use a third-party software. And I should underline this during my presentation, how important it is to be based on your own coding of your own materials. The site is used by thousands of colleagues and it has improved the learning uh, by many students, what has been con confirmed many times. What many people probably do not realize is that this website, when you see on the, when you, when you uh, open the website uh, modules, you can see the structure of the modules, but further down, you shall see image summary. And where is this image summary? There are these thousands of images and they're separated just for magnetic resonance or just for ultrasound, etc. And these images are very important and very useful to be added into the uh, educational materials we are preparing for e-learning. There are very good uh, skills in our, in our profession and I specifically would like to, to mention several of the uh, very good educational sites. One is the Paris Pros Educational Sites, pros.org, which again is using, is using very good structure in order to transfer this knowledge. We also have excellent materials presented by the AAPM in the United States and the AAPM Virtual Library was uh, uh, open free to all colleagues from low and middle income countries, what is a very good uh, um, gesture from our colleagues. Also the IAE ARPOC website, which is the most uh, uh, often visited website in the, in the profession. The many European projects of the European Federation, EFOM, like Eutempe, et cetera, which are now uh, uh, moving outside the European Union. And of course, we did from the very beginning, very many teleteaching, what we shall now call these webinars. And um, the first teleteaching was made between Malaysia and the United States, after it's between King's College London, where I work in the US, and then in the ICTP and in many places, as we have it now all over the world. But the important thing was how we are assessing these materials, what the students are saying, and uh, we made a number of um, assessments of this, uh, of using of, of e learning. Actually, starting from 2003, we're having every other year one specific test about the use and usefulness of e learning. And you could see here from this diagram how the students are giving high marks to almost everything what is possible uh, to, be, to be discussed. And very importantly, their assessment before and after using a few learning is, is, is showing how after using a few learning, they have significantly improved their knowledge. All students groups we have tested in so many years reported 25 to 35 improvement in their knowledge after the first use of few learning tasks. And 84% of both students and experts assess the e-learning materials with mark above 75% out of 100. And of course, images have been found very helpful. Of course, there are questions which are related to the need of improvement. First of all, e-learning is a learning from a screen and there is some eye fatigue. Maybe we have accustomed to it, but we have to take it into consideration. Also something what at the beginning, few people took, uh, uh, were, uh, were considering this was to need to take notes over the e-learning handouts. And also teachers had to change their paradigm the way of, the, of, of, of delivery of their, of their materials. There was one problem that all materials we were developing and all materials which were available were only in English. So we had to address also this question. The internet speed was a problem which now is overcome, but one very important question which is coming from everyone during this past 20 years, every single year is I miss my book. And here I have to underline that I also miss my book but e-learning is not something what is replacing the book. E-learning is complementing the books 
which, are, which we are using. And this is the first international conference on, uh, on e-learning, including experts from 26 countries around the world uh, back in 2003. The teacher's evaluation is very important. And you could see here on this diagram how people are saying why they are postponing the decision to use e-learning. There are different reasons. For some, the technology is not sufficient. For, for others, there is no budget. But the biggest percentage of all is related to lack of experience. And we had to address exactly this, how to, how to encourage the people to do their e-learning courses. So all the teachers, all, all specialists we have discussed and we had a number of, uh, of uh, uh, questionnaires about, are saying that e-learning is very suitable for physics and engineering. However, it is difficult to prepare e-learning materials. And indeed, if you haven't done e-learning materials, you don't realize how difficult is this. The effort to produce e-learning materials are often, often underestimated by students and by the universities. And universities still face some conservatism. This particular year, however, during the COVID time, I am sure everyone uh, saw that e-learning is saving a lot of our activities. And finally, all of our colleagues were saying that e-learning is imperative for medical physics due to the dynamic professional development and the need of fast professional growth around the world. The actions which we took, and these actions we developed over 10 years, were developing new templates for the lecture materials, creating specific forum for e-learning users, creating medical physics e-dictionary, electronic dictionary and uh, online encyclopedia of medical physics, a number of guides and university awareness about the need of e-learning and the value of it. So now comes the next question, how to implement e-learning? And the first thing is to start with a very good preparation of your classical materials. So we are using e-learning since 2001 for my course, uh, in my course in King's College London, using our own e-learning materials. And as all of you, our lectures are uh, with PowerPoint plus handouts, but the handouts we had to make with a standard template. And this is a standard template which we are using, which is four slides on a landscape format, because this template is the most cost-effective from one side of view, giving sufficient space to students to write around from other uh, point of view, uh, allowing good visibility of the images. And you know, all our lecture materials have a lot of diagrams, images, uh, 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 formulas, etc. And this type of format, which we are sending to the students together with the lectures. So this is a PDF uh, handout. They can uh, use their tablets and they write directly their notes over the material. And obviously it is necessary to have to, have to underline that smartphones are not suitable for e-learning. Smartphones are good for many other things, maybe for checking Facebook, but not for e-learning because we have very good quality images. We have to speak about image quality assessment, etc. cetera. There is, there is small material which requires very good visibility and uh, also taking notes over the materials. So, I stress the need of tablets is very good, but not smartphones. We use our own website from 2003, but this was very difficult to maintain. So from 2010, we are using Moodle and I shall uh, give you most of my, uh, of my examples uh, from our Moodle platform. About the lectures, we often speak about the video of the lectures. And the video of the lectures is done in many places as a proper video with a video camera and many universities are doing that. However, the proper video produces very large files and these very large files are difficult to handle. So most of us are doing PowerPoint plus voiceover. In order to do this uh, effectively, you have to break your lecture on a number of parts. So your lecture is probably one or two hours lecture and you have to separate it in a small chunks which are 10-15 minutes according to the logic of your lecture. And this is one example of one such chunk of a lecture. The lecture is, is on about x-ray tubes. These are different parts. This, this lecture has six parts and I'm showing you just part number five with its uh, uh, parts of the lecture. And at the end of each one of these chunks, we have a specific question to the students, which is very important to show them uh, 
to show to us how much they have understood this particular subject. And uh, I have to say that this is not question to be assessed, but just as a feedback to us and a feedback to students about their understanding. So each one of these chunks starts with a standard uh, distribution of the things inside the, inside the lecture and ends with a small question. This way the student has constantly the, uh, the structure of the lecture with himself. And uh, after this, we have uh, call, uh, question and, uh, and answer uh, sessions when we are answering uh, some questions to the students. Of course, this also comes, these small chunks, each one of those is 20 to 60 megabytes when it is with a voiceover. And just 15 minutes can take about one to three hours to prepare, depending of your uh, specific um, uh, uh, lecture, which you should have to prepare. Another very important question is the copyright. We have to check whether there is university license covering a number of these activities, whether this is also including in your country, what is the basis of the license, is it limited access by password, etc. Is it for academic purposes only? And if there is no license for that, because now we are presenting our lectures over the internet, we have to contact the the copyright uh, uh, owner, the authors, the publisher, etc. And we have to highlight that the material is not available for unlimited time and is on a secure platform and is for educational purposes. This is very important to be underlined, otherwise one could have problems in uh, uh, receiving the copyright. Of course, we have to agree the type of acknowledgement. Speaking about the copyright, there are two very important questions which still are a gray area. To whom belongs the copyright of your lectures video recording? According to your university, this belongs to the university because you are employee of this university or uh, whatever is the institution. However, this is about the content. What about the performance? The performance of one lecture we know very well is not just the dry material of the lecture. This is how you should present the lecture. And this performance is similar to the performance of one musician when he plays his instrument. And the performance right is always your own. I said this is a gray area and I'm sure that in future we shall uh, speak about this more uh, because this will be uh, underlined with the more and more use of e-learning in our profession. This is one uh, sample page of the uh, Moodle virtual learning environment and you could see how we have structured everything for the students. The, the timetables, the lectures, the coursework and this, and this should be standard for every VLE environment and for every student, because I'm underlining, student is alone at home. He has to be guided by something. And this something is your structure. And further, when you go inside the lectures for one specific module, so for example, this is the module imaging, harmonizing, radiation, every single lecture has to be numbered in a way that it, 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 it creates a logical structure. And in this logical structure, the students have to know which is first, second, third, fourth, etc. Uh, of, the, of the lectures. You could have standard file names, you could name them one, two, three, four, you could name them according to the date, it is up to you. But remember that this structure and this files name, the, the names of the, of the files uh, are very important uh, for students in order to follow exactly the logical uh, consequence and the logical buildup of knowledge inside your lecture. Of course, you need very good administrator of e-learning who can handle all this during the process. What about practicals and laboratories? When we come to practicals and laboratories, we could record a video. Recording a video, however, most of you know, is quite a laborious process and it can never be very well done. So the best is to prepare a demo. And these are images, again, from the Emerald materials, and for 20 years, our students have never assessed image quality directly from the equipment, from the X-ray screen or from the camera. They're only using good monitor uh, in classroom and from the good monitor, they're assessing the quality of different images. And this way we could also show them different artifacts, etc. So this is something easy. We could also prepare a demo through using a, a free software like ImageJ and then give to the students some tasks how to use specific specific images, for example, to make the histogram, etc., and how to interpret this, this, re, this results. At the end, we have to collect specific coursework report 
and I have to underline, speaking about practicals and, and labs, nothing can replace a real medical physics practical. And in many cases, we have to repeat later on in vivo some of the measurements, for example, like radiation measurement. It should be done in vivo. You can ask me, what about simulations? I shall speak about simulations later on. This is again a Moodle uh, platform and something what is very important is how to handle the coursework and the coursework materials and everything in e-learning is prone to plagiarism. So anytime when the students submit materials, they have to have a declaration, they have to agree that this is uh, uh, plagiarism free and only after that they can upload, upload their files. Of course, we can use specific software, similar to the Turnitin software, but Turnitin is very good for text material. But in our case, we have lots of diagrams, images, formulas, so Turnitin is not so useful. Anyhow, all these type of materials we introduced in the ICTP in Trieste uh, master course, and which for just one month, they started in, and this was immediate success, and I shall uh, speak about this later on. Assessment of the coursework. Again, this is something what you have to do online. And uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing a spreadsheet and over the spreadsheet, I'm giving the mark for specific, uh, for specific uh, question, some notes, uh, uh, feedback to the student uh, where he, can, uh, he or she can improve during this uh, particular part. But I have to say it is quite time consuming much more time consuming if you take the if you have the paper and you just make ticks and just write several words on it even that this is time consuming i would say if you if you try to do if you try to uh, include comments over pdf file or over word file this is even more time consuming so with the excel spreadsheet we found that this is easier for us next question what to do about the exams if it is oral exam via skype it is easy we can do now uh, a lot of uh, even master uh, uh, viva assessments, master project viva assessment. But the unseen written exams at home are typical for some of the e-learning experiences. How to do this? First of all, in order to, to do that, we have to change the whole uh, look of our exam paper and the questions, most of the questions should be tasks or as we usually say, it, hard order of thinking questions. When we collect the, the word files, these are with password, and you have to expect double the assessment time because HOT, high order of thinking questions, are far more difficult to mark rather than other normal questions. How long will take one such e-learning exam when the student is at home? This is university decision. Could be normally it's two hours, but it could be two plus two hours. In some places, up to 24 hours for one exam. And if the high order of thing questions are good, then you have a good spread of marks. And I can tell you from our own experience, even for 24 hours, we had good spread of marks with such type of questions. However, if these are standard, just questions which are easy to answer, I mean, these are just explanatory questions, uh, which uh, are uh, often presented in some of the exam papers, then you may end up with a mark which is very high for every student. Invigilation, when we have invigilation at the home of the, of, the, of the student by the webcam of his own computer, will need a permit to enter his home because with the web camera you're entering his home. Or we may have open book exam where there is no invigilation. This is what we did, no invigilation, but with very good questions. And this is a higher, high order of thinking question. You present the student with a diagram, you ask him to discuss this, this diagram, to take decision based on it, etc. And then your question will be, well, it is, it is quite difficult where to find such kind of questions. You are spending a lot of time for that. I could show you these uh, two books. There is a third one in preparation, Problems and Solutions in Medical Physics, Diagnostic Imaging, Nuclear Medicine, that Radiotherapy is in preparation. These are part of the CRC Press uh, series, which uh, IUMP is dealing. I'm part of the um, editorial board of this series. And uh, this is developed by a, a team from Malaysia and the United States, and I think these are very good. I would recommend them to everyone. There are hundreds of solutions inside which can be used for our educational process. The next question is, what type of e-learning? There are three main types of e-learning, developing modules, what we discussed until now, building simulations, and structuring a whole program. Now, developing modules, we saw it is difficult, 
but building simulations is even more difficult and structuring program, programs is the most difficult thing. Anytime we're doing this, we have to know that we shall have to have not only the knowledge in our field, let's say nuclear medicine, but also pedagogical approach to that and also some uh, um, new, some, some good knowledge about the e-learning development itself. If you only have an e-learning developer to work for you and you do not have a common language, you do not form a good team and the final e-learning product is not good. And when we do that, I am underlining again, structure of knowledge is extremely important. We initially did our own uh, project, our, our, our own uh, e-learning program. This was too difficult. And then we went into the, some of the virtual learning environment um, software platforms like WebCity, Blackboard or Moodle. We chose Moodle. It was suitable for us, for you, maybe some one of the others. So we developed, we, we discussed how we developed modules. What about the e-learning simulation? These are three learning simulations, which are quite difficult to do. To develop. The first one is, uh, was made by us. This is a Jager Müller counter simulator, which we made in 98. Behind this simulation, there are two man months of specialist uh, uh, man months uh, uh, work. And this was excellent. It was using third party software as interface and MATLAB in the background to calculate inverse square law, uh, uh, half uh, uh, life of different isotopes, etc., etc. It was working perfectly. After one year, the third party software changed the version and we adapted the, soft, uh, the whole demo. After another year, they changed the version and we adapted once again the whole of the simulation. And after the third time they changed the software, we were not able to do it. So this software, which was enjoyed by all students and we used in so many places, were actually just left because of this third party software. Some other very good softwares like the X-ray Spectrum Processing Tool, maybe some of you remember it, or the X-ray Simulator. This was made in the UK and the IPM. The X-ray Simulator, this is an Italian program. They were also very good, but a lot of these programs actually uh, disappeared after we changed to the 64-bit uh, operational systems. And this was very, very big problem because it is very difficult and there were not so many people who can reprogram again all this. So extremely effective simulations, but very difficult to develop and with very short life cycle. In order to use effective simulations, we need to have a good forum and quick dissemination of these materials because everything depends on software, on the IT equipment, and very often these are commercial. Some other excellent simulations. This is a simulation in radiotherapy made in New Zealand, the PRISM simulator. The VERT simulator, which continues to work very well in the United Kingdom, this is a Canadian simulation of a linear accelerator, which received uh, several years ago uh, an award of the AAPM. And all these are very good and uh, I'm sure that you shall find them very useful. But something what is small but very useful are the animated GIFs images of the University of Colorado in the United States, which are superb, available free, and they could really enhance your uh, teaching materials. In order to spread quickly all this knowledge, we established a journal in 2013, and this was IMP journal dedicated to educational and professional issues, the Medical Physics International. I have to underline, this is not a research journal. This is not a journal where you are looking for a number of, uh, of publications and a number of uh, uh, points you shall collect from this. It is specifically made in order to distribute information about education. And you could see how so many people around the world in, are using it. This is just in one period of time, May, June, 2016. In South America, 3,500. In Europe, 2,800. North America, 2,500, etc., etc. In Asia, 2,500. So that means all these materials, all this uh, information which we present to our colleagues is very important. And we presented here the VERT the software from the UK to be used in many other countries. We presented the MATRAT uh, open source for uh, planning, which was made in, in Germany. We made here the announcement of the original GIF emanations of the, uh, of the University of, of Colorado. So if you have such kind of materials, if you have such e-learning or such other experience, or even if you want to share a whole lecture, please do send it. We invite papers and readers into this journal. This is a free journal, uh, two times per year. And now we have added to it 
the special sessions, the special uh, issues uh, related to history of medical physics. This is again a coded uh, uh, website. I have to give credits to the colleagues, uh, Professor Stoyva and Engineer Svetkov, who developed these websites. They also developed the uh, encyclopedia website with the dictionary. And if you remember, this was another point which we took as an action. And uh, it took of, uh, our team a lot of time to collect the, the thesaurus of medical physics terminologies, and now these are translated into 31 languages. And you could see here from the encyclopedia, you could go from any, this is English to Spanish, but could be Spanish to English or Spanish to Chinese and different languages. So there are about 3,500 articles, over 1,500 images. These are constantly used by thousands of lecturers and students every single month. This is the website, this is a free website. You could take images, you could take explanations, and this is something what I would really encourage you to do. Uh, at the moment, we have just completed the update of the dictionary and the update of the encyclopedia. So in two months, uh, there will be another 600 new terms added to it, what is typical for our very dynamic profession. Something else what we said that we need is that we need e-learning guides. And this is a book, uh, uh, e-learning in medical physics and engineering, which is a guide how to use Moodle in particular, because this was our, our experience. So uh, it is on Amazon and I would specifically underline that the Kindle version is in color because this book was based on a uh, purpose-made uh, website on uh, medical physics. And this specific website is in color, so it is good to have there about 100 screenshots from the website just to give you step by step what to do in order uh, to be a good teacher, to prepare good materials, to prepare good assessments or chat rooms or news uh, lines, etc. The prerequisites for any virtual learning environment system is the quality of the lectures, the, the quality of your classical lectures. And after that, you transfer them into the e-learning platform. And another prerequisite is very good local and software support and very good administrator behind that. So very often administrator could be one of us dealing with the e-learning. The next question, when we can introduce e-learning and how much e-learning we could introduce? There are many uh, pros of the e-learning and these pros are answering exactly the question the question when we, we can introduce it, when we need good management of the learning, of course, when we have limited number of lectures and this, and this learning is then excellent for that, when we want to reach dispersed students and due to this reason, the e-learning uh, is developing, the, for example, Australia, where they have excellent distance learning programs. When we need to, to have quality, uh, enhancing quality of learning and everyone wants that. And when we work quick, uh, when we want to have quick updates, as I said it. Very importantly, as we have it at the moment, when we are in a time of crisis. And I would say these two uh, uh, papers are very good, uh, very well presenting this kind of uh, 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 paradigms and needs of the assessment and the use of e-learning. Uh, this is free program, this is not free, but from this program I shall show you just one image. This is how actually specialists are assessing the e-learning. You could see this is too complex probably for us, but still this is the content design, uh, whether the students have sufficient health, whether there is a subjective norm, uh, whether there is uh, enthusiasm during the development, the learner's behavior, the legal issues, the effective communication between the students and the lecturers. So there are many points we have to consider for one good e-learning material, but this is probably too much. We could go for with part of that. I could encourage you to go and to read this particular paper. The general cons will show us when we shall not do e-learning. And first of all, during e-learning, the lecturer cannot build the role model. It is not just delivering of the lecture. The student would like to see into his lecture a model which he will follow later on in his professional life. Very often students feel alienated. They're alone in their, in, in their own small room, uh, probably just with internet link and chat room and that's it. So we have to try to find a way to, to break this alienation. Also, some curriculums are not possible to be done by e-learning, and I shall speak about this later on. This requires much more time for the lecture. 
if someone says that e-learning is a, is a cheap uh, delivery of e-learning, uh, this person is in a very big uh, um, uh, wrong steps. It is quite much time, time, time consuming to produce a good e-learning materials. It requires very stable IT provision, and it is very difficult for the director of the program and for the administrator of the program. Uh, and these two people have now quite different um, and more demanding um, you know, tasks in comparison with the classical delivery of the materials. And when we said, when here we are in the time of COVID-19, when e-learning was essential, not only for our uh, uh, courses, but for every university and for every school around the world. Our profession was very well prepared. Since 2006, we have e learning seminars in every World Congress around the world. We publish over 50 articles on e learning in the Medical Physics International Journal. We have special trainer trainer workshops since 2015. So we are well prepared for that. And due to this reason, most of the master courses switch to e-learning without any problem during this particular time. And I shall give you the, the example with the ICTP master course. The number of practicals, however, need to be repeated after the crisis. As I said, there are practicals like measuring of radiation or calibration of monitors, which cannot be done just as a e-learning task. Clinical training cannot be replaced by e-learning. We have to underline that. And all students prefer to have contact with lecturers. So if you have your students there, try to have some kind of session. Try to encourage them to do something because, again, I said they're alone. Here is this example which I showed you, uh, which is done by the Master Course on Advanced Medical Physics in ICTP Trieste together with the University of Trieste in Italy. This course, and you could see some of the students and a lot of the lecturers, it is supported very much by the uh, Association of Italian Medical Physicists. So they work there for free. This course did not have you learning, did not have experience in learning at all until January. In January, it happened just by chance that we developed together with them a uh, program for e-learning, which was one month. And after one month interaction in February, they appear that they actually live only because of this program. The student, the the students in the, in the master course are from 20 low and middle income countries. You can see they are coming from all over the world. The lecturers are coming from all over Italy. And even this dispersed situation in students and lecturers, we succeeded to make a very good, uh, um, a very good uh, uh, master course. And I have to give credit here specifically to the directors, uh, Professor Paduvani and Professor Longo from ISTP. We are now preparing this experience to be published in the American Physics International Journal in December and also uh, wait to see something which is coming. This is a CRC book, Medical Physics during COVID-19, to be published very soon, probably around New Year, which will show how our profession, how one profession succeeded to actually jump through this very difficult period for the whole of the, of the, of the, of the humanity. And maybe our experience could be useful to other people. When we go to the, to the, to the curricula, each curriculum in medical physics has several parts. And when we come to the foundational general modules like anatomy and physiology, like signal processing, like statistics, they are excellent e-learning materials. It's not necessary to develop our own. We can just use the others. When it comes to the specialized modules, we have a lot of visuals, like on the, in the SPROS website, the Emitter Encyclopedia, the Emerald, in many other places, there are visuals to be included. But they cannot be used everywhere into our, uh, into our materials. Just some of the specialized modules could be only based on e-learning. The students will need to have very good e-materials. They need to have access to e-books, to e-journals. It is not just the internet. It is the specific password protected uh, places where they shall have to go. And only small uh, percentage of the labs could be performed with e-learning. Majority has to be repeated after the after that, research project also should be in a classical form, not as an e-learning form. The assessment could be performed online, like I, I, I said, assessment of coursework and assessment of, uh, uh, of master, uh, uh, of master um, projects, and we require to test for plagiarism. When it comes to training programs, clinical tasks, practical performance is essential. And we could use e-learning just for planning and understanding the tasks. And you could see here one of the, uh, one of the plans which are from Emerald. Emerald includes five such, five such tables. Each one is about 10 pages. So that means 
about 50 pages of tables, which show the breakdown of different practical tasks uh, if we have 80 days of training. And this is very important. You could use them from the website of the MRL in order to plan your own activities and to prepare the students better to use more effectively the very limited time they actually have with the real medical equipment in the hospital. Again, we need to have very good e-library and we can use simulators, but they facilitate, they do not replace the actual performance of some practical tasks. And assessment uh, in the field of training cannot be made online. You know this well. These are places around the world where we spread uh, e-learning through the uh, uh, ICTP College of Medical Physics. And these are over 80 countries around the world. And also we made a number, these are the, the places are these green dots with the yellow dots are the uh, different uh, seminars and courses we have made on using a field learning. Uh, so all we know about 1,200 students from ICTP from 82 countries receive field learning materials and actually we're giving them them we are giving to everyone a full set of lecture materials for one full course with ready visuals etc and they could just adapt them in their own country these are 24 courses organized in 19 in 19 countries and these are um, these are master courses so these are the courses to which i helped uh, to develop i was part of the of the team these are courses in europe courses in asia courses in South America and Africa. And very importantly, when we with our colleagues were preparing the guide 56 of the International Atomic Energy Agency about the academic requirements for master uh, courses, we also included there the need of field learning because this is imperative for our profession. Field learning materials, which I have described, received the uh, uh, inaugural award of the European Union for Education, the Leonardo da Vinci Award. And encouraged by that, we decided to encourage other people to prepare a small book about the pioneering of field learning in medical physics. Initially, we made this book just for our colleagues from over 300 uh, colleagues from 36 countries. And so we expected maybe 1,000 downloads, just as a souvenir, a memory, how we work and how we develop the learning, what kind of, of, of errors we had, how we overcome them, etc. To our total surprise, after three years, the book was published in 2015. After three years, this book had over 48,000 downloads. And uh, this means that other professions are also using our experience to build e-learning materials in their own countries and their own master courses. The key message from all these conferences we organized, from all this work we did with our team to develop, to update, to assess, and to introduce e-learning over so many years the key message is that e-learning is essential for medical physics, but education cannot be based on e-learning alone. And in our fields and in all fields in, in science, education is effective when e-learning is blended with classical learning. And that is something that is extremely important, blended learning, not only e-learning. And based on our experience and on the fact that specialist modules in my plus master project take about two thirds of the credits of one master program, we could uh, predict that the e-learning component of one educational program could be about 30% and not more than 50% of the overall course. So there, there will be some discussions about that, but these are things which uh, uh, most of our colleagues believe are the limits which we should have to take into consideration. Other key points from our e-learning experience, blended learning, the hybrid of classic plus e-learning is the preferred option by all lecturers and all students. And I said, we had until now at least 10 questionnaires. Everybody is for blended learning. The impact of field learning in medical physics is very uh, interesting because it helped to increase the global, the global growth in our profession in the past two decades. And it created a pioneering name of our profession among the other professions for uh, the use of field learning. And I have shown this diagram before. In 1965, there had been about 6,000 medical faces around the world. In next decade, 65, 75, they increased by 2,000. In the next decade, they also increased by 2,000. In the 85, 95, they also increased by 2,000. But when we introduced e-learning in 95, 2005, the growth was double, 40,000. 4,000 students was the growth during this decade. And in the next decade, when there were many e-learning 
activities, the growth in the profession was actually even doubled, 4,000 plus 4,000, 8,000 uh, increase of the number of medical facilities around the world. And at the moment, we're in 2020, we have about 30,000 medical facilities. What, what shows that we continue with this very rapid uh, expansion of our profession, which is important because by 2035, according to the WHO and the Global Task Force for Radiotherapy, you know that we need to be about 60,000 medical faces around the world in order to supply the demand of the healthcare. So this can be done only through effective education and this education is supported by e-learning. Something very important, the digital file format. First of all, I said how important it is to have our own materials uh, which are made, which are coded by us. It is not necessary to have complex uh, web shells which are normally made for a, a, a commercial uh, websites where they have to attract people. Our web shells are just to transfer the knowledge. And speaking about transfer the knowledge, this is very important. You all, I'm sure, most of you have been there, have been around 20 years ago when we had the word files .doc. Now it is docx file and the docx file do not read now anymore some of the first doc files. You may be sure that after 10 years there will be docz file and you may be sure that docz file will not read at all the first files from the, uh, from the dot doc. So that means we are in a situation where we could have a breakage of the transfer of knowledge, which is the most important uh, activity in humanity. Uh, centuries ago, people have written their, their, their messages on stone in order to stay longer time. After this, they have been on parchment and in paper. We know how to, how to preserve paper, but what to do with these files? If we do not have a long-term thinking about that, we may appear that after 50 years, everything what we have made before has disappeared because the platform is not there. Even the PDF now, uh, uh, if, you, if you save the file, you can save it that it is not possible to be read with the previous uh, PDF platforms. So this is something what I would like to say to, to the whole of the profession, extremely important for us. And we have to push the developers of these products as much as possible to be able each new uh, product, each new software to be able to read the formats of the previous one. The conclusion at the end, medical physics is one of the pioneers of e learning and our colleagues from so many countries have demonstrated that they, they can produce and effectively implement e learning. E learning is very important for a dynamic profession because it actually makes translation of research into education. We have superb research in our field and we always speak about translation of research into clinical practice, but we have to translate it into education because the next generation are exactly the people who will use the, these new methods to be uh, translated into the, uh, into the clinical field. And the number of websites which I have shown you, uh, which are very important, they're welcomed by the students. I would say the MPI journal is providing a forum where we could discuss e learning. Another very important thing, e-learning alone is not possible. The solution is blended delivery and the e-learning development is very difficult and it is time consuming. This is creative process. It is not just uh, uh, making some small slides and e-learning requires additional resources. It is not cheap. This is for materials, for lectures, for students, for VLE platforms, administration, etc. But e-learning has underpinned and increased the global growth of our profession. And this particular uh, uh, webinar is also another example for the use of e-learning. And I would like to, to thank the, the organizers of the IMP school webinars, in particular, Professor uh, Aaron Chogulin and Professor Magdalen Stover. And I would like specifically also to uh, thank to all our colleagues with whom we worked together over 20 years, because this is a superb international collaboration. You could see their names and these are 36 countries here and is a part of their images. Without them, we wouldn't succeed because such collaboration, I am sure, will be the main drive for the future development of our profession. I shall finish here. Thank you for your attention and it was a pleasure to be with you. Uh, thank you, Professor Slavik, for elaborately talking about advantages of e-learning and also some of the limitations of uh, e-learning, especially for uh, medical physics, which is a professional education and uh, need a lot of uh, 
practical training and the hospital training so uh, you have covered most of the things and the huge amount of work you and your team has done is applicable uh, also you have mentioned in your lecture that uh, uh, 30 percent of the people do not engage in e-learning and only causes lack of experience and i hope such kind of webinars uh, Uh, will encourage the people to use this beautiful platform of e-learning and in covid-19 it has become more relevant how important is e-learning and also i learn and i know that emerald e-learning platform the book published and so many things and also you have said that uh, for uh, this part smartphone is not feasible because of very high quality imaging and also you have mentioned that uh, e simulation is very laborious to develop and uh, uh, people have benefited there are few questions uh, uh, i will try to put to you uh, and one is that have you used blackboard embedded in moodle instead use skype for oral examination blackboard uh no it is have you used blackboard embedded in moodle no 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 we haven't used this uh black blackboard is very often a quite different platform i do not think whether the students here do not uh, uh the question here is not related about the interactive boards we have used interactive boards yes a lot i did not include it here in the in the in the presentation but interactive boards are very useful and uh, a lot of the work uh, actually we are doing is with interactive boards okay and there is another question that uh, moodle experience and assessment uh, utilities about that your comments uh, uh, one of the um, participant he has asked for well uh i would have to say moodle is a bit tricky program because part of um, if you if you if you prepare a small part of moodle and if you pre pre prepare a small uh, activity for a small number of students it is free uh however if you would like to have it as a large program with a, with a more space and in our case uh, our uh, uh your learning materials are quite uh, large in volume so in this case uh, you have to pay for moodle so uh, in this book which i said all this is very very clearly explained what type of you, of, of uh, virtual learning environment up to what extent you could use free what if, uh, up to what extent you could actually enlarge it how to enlarge it it is a very powerful platform every single vle platform blackboard uh, web city um, uh, moodle they are very powerful you only have to go inside they are made by real specialists i have to i have to really underline that 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 it it is not uh, something what is uh, just uh, on the surface they they have very high depth uh there is another question is it compulsory that the lecturers have a background in medical physics are there any implication if lecturer are not from medical physics background well i mean this is this is related to the accreditation of the course if one course does not have sufficient number of uh, of uh, lecturers who are medical physicists then of course this course will not be accredited and you are on you are the you are the the chairman of the current accreditation board so you you know this better and you could answer it but of course Uh, when it comes to the uh, lecturing statistics it is not necessary to be medical faces if it is lecturing of uh, signal processing it is not necessary to be medical faces if it is anatomy and physiology it is imperative not to be medical faces so there are things which are not for medical faces but uh, uh, when it comes to lecturing uh, uh, nuclear medicine or radiotherapy it's it's only medical faces who could lecture there and then one more question is there is this moodle platform freely available or you have to prescribe and pay for this thing yes i have already answered to the, to that and uh, uh, 
it is it is free only if it is for small uh, development let's say one module uh, or maybe for a small program for a small number of students as soon as it becomes big then you have to pay for it but normally there are university licenses and university licenses are the best way to do it because Moodle can handle different types of, uh, of software, different types of programs, not only physics and engineering, but also uh, languages or uh, biology, etc. So this is a powerful program. But again, I'm saying I do not want to make advertisement for Moodle. I, I'm not working for Moodle. I just said that for us, it was very, very useful. But for some other people, I know in the in the United States, it is uh, the other the blackboard which is more used and the and the web city. They all are very good programs. Can you unmute your PPT so that I can uh, share uh, my information? Uh, can you just uh, unshare? Stop sharing. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yes, okay. I will. Sorry. Okay. And there is there is another question. Uh, what are you recommending for e-student to receive practical experience? <laughs> if there is someone who can give answer to that, uh, this person will probably receive a special award. There is no something what we could say because, because when we say practical application, this should be practical, full stop. Um, I mean, we could, assess, we could give some information which is partial, which is, which is partial, but otherwise, without practical training, there is no medical physics. That's, that, is, that, is, that is the bottom line. Of practical course, cannot be virtual. Practical cannot be virtual, cannot be virtual. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there is another last question I will take because of the time. Are you still using PPT plus WISE for lecture? Are you moving to advantages of uh, web meeting utilities for recording and editing and displaying? Very good question. Well, web uh, uh, webinars and, and any type of, 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 of web city is very powerful too. No question about that. However, the students prefer to have PPT with voiceover. Why? Because perhaps they, they would like to have two to four in the afternoon for something else and they would like to have their, their lectures in the evening when, when they can do it. And then you should say, okay, but you could record it and you could have it in the evening. Yes, but that means that in this case, there should be a constantly working administrator in the background. And at the moment here with this webinar, we have constantly Professor Stoivo in the background who handles all this situation. So this makes the whole delivery far more expensive. From that point of view, PPT with voiceover is, 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 is better. And I have to tell you from my own experience, when I as a lecturer, when I prepare a PowerPoint plus voiceover, I'm more careful. That is why you spend more time. If you have just a free lecture, you sometimes can slip something. But if you are speaking over the, over the video and then you, you listen yourself, then you return back and you, and you uh, make this slide better and the other slide better. So it's actually more refined. Uh, dear participant, because of the time constraint, I cannot take more questions. I will pass on the question to uh, Professor Slavik and he will communicate uh, with you. So once again, I thank Professor Slavik Tabako for the excellent talk about the e-learning, the platforms, the utilities, uh, its advantages and some of the limitations. Uh, thank you to IOMP for giving this opportunity. Also, thanks to Magdalena for technical support she and the hard work she is putting in. So I will just share the next our information about our next uh, IOMP uh, webinar, and uh, this will be on seventh of November, and this is on the occasion of uh, IDMP. International Day of Medical Physics, which is celebrated every year, 7th November, since 2013. And this year's theme is Medical Physicist as Health Professionals. And uh, we have a panel discussions and panelists are Ola Holmer, Madan Rehani, Brian Duani, and from the all regional organizations of the IOMP are participating. I invite you all 
to join this next IOMP webinar on 7th of November, same time, 12 noon to 1 p.m. GMT. The information is on IOMP website and we are circulating through other websites also. So you have to register. With this uh, information, I once again thank all the participants we have participated, generated the discussion. Professor Slavik Tabako, Magdalena, Professor Madan Rehani and IOMPX.com for giving uh, this opportunity. Stay safe, stay connected, education will continue. With this word, have a nice day. Thank you very much for your support.